The importance of JAK-STAT pathway is very prominent in the pathogenesis of myeloproliferative disorders. There are four JAKs, JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and TIC2. Particularly, uh, JAK2 is quite important in the pathogenesis of myelofibrosis, uh, especially based on the findings during the last decade. Well, the jak uh, pathway is important for the uh, regulation of the hematopoiesis because it uh, controls the proliferation of the cells by sending signal to the, to the cells to uh, proliferate more and to live more, which is the condition of aneoplastic proliferation. The JAK-SAT pathway is the main transu transducing pathway downstream of growth factor receptors such as erythropoietin and um, thr thrombopoietin. So th these are key physiological regulators. The commonest activating mutation in the pathway is the JAK2V617F mutation. This doesn't really distinguish between any of the classical MPNs. It's, it's never seen in chronic myeloid leukemia in association with BCR-ABLE. It's seen almost always in association with polycythemia rubrovira, and that's perhaps the one outstanding feature. And it's seen in around 30 to 50 percent of cases of ET and MF. So in those cases, it doesn't really distinguish between the two. In addition to the classical V617F point mutation, there are also um, a range of mutations in exon 12 of JAK2 which also confer constitutive signaling through the JAK-SAT pathway. And then in addition, other acti activating mutations such as MIPL involving the TPO receptor will also activate the JAK-SAT pathway. And that's found in a minority of cases of ET and myelofibrosis that are JAK2V617F negative. The, the JAK1 and 2 inhibitors, like other tyrosine kinase inhibitors, inhibit the enzymatic function of the JAK um, enzymes which are high up in the JAK-SAT signaling pathway and they abrogate that abnormally increased signaling that, that flows through as a consequence of JAK2V617F or other activating mutations.